Okay, hello again everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to uh, introduce briefly the new uh, version of our dynamic propeller balancing software version 1.3 that's going to get released soon. And more importantly, I'm going to focus a little bit on uh, filtering and some uh, really cool functionality uh, in terms of advanced filtering with the software and you'll see how we're going to use that. Uh, to balance and calibrate our uh, rig. So you can see here I have the software uh, loaded uh, pretty much default and I have my propeller uh, balancing ring here with a uh, with a reference blade and what I also went on ahead and did I placed a heavy uh, side of a tape you know heavy um, piece of tape there to give me a heavy side. You can also see there's other uh, pieces of tapes here because I had balanced the propeller so I can show you also what a what a good balance, um, uh, what a good balance, uh, you know, would look like. Uh, the other thing that I want to highlight here, I went ahead and redid some work with our um, graphics uh, GUI here. I uh, gave it a crosshair. Um, you can actually zoom in and out uh, with the slider, but uh, if you go to it and you hit the shift key and click, uh, you'll see that uh, the cursor turns into a magnifying glass and using a mouse scroll wheel, you can actually scroll uh, and zoom uh, in and out further and then if you hit control key you can actually pan it so made it very very interactive it should make it extremely uh, simple for us to compare graphs and also take uh, you know measurements from a vibration perspective to see how well uh, your balancing is uh, working so let's go on ahead and connect the software uh, connect it to port 5 here and we'll get a uh, connect message from the Arduino. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the way that I proceed with this with the advanced filtering is before we do any sort of compensation or worry about inverting X or Y that the way we did it in the past with simple low pass filtering, I actually go on ahead and I will take an initial run to see where I have an imbalance in the propeller. Now for me, 1280 is about 3000 RPMs. Um, and I'm going to take 10 samples, uh, one dummy run. Again, you can determine your RPMs and everything through the uh, ESC controls here. Uh, but just with that, um, you know, I start with 4G and 3200 on, on, on bandwidth. Again, if you do not um, know what these values do, leave them alone at default. Uh, these are really good uh, values to start with. And then with the prop uh, pointing in the right direction, as you can see here on my rig, I'm actually going to go and take an initial run. And that will give me some parameters. Again we can uh, you know zoom in and out of our graph. This one is just basically just using the default low passes <coughs> and you can actually see the way this is uh, you know this is working it's actually giving us a good direction but um, uh, we want to use advanced filtering uh, for this uh, for this process. So the way that I will start is um, having taken samples I will bring on my FFT and you can see right away that uh, we have a couple of major imbalances according to our uh, uh, spectrum graph here. Uh, the first one is actually pretty high at around 165 at 50 Hertz and there seems to be another one at 140 at 231 Hertz. Now this is probably um, like bearing or it might be due to your uh, setup with the rig you know uh, net net of it is there's two imbalances here and what we need to do is isolate uh, every single one of them and try to eliminate them so the first thing that we do is this major one here I'm, I'm more than certain is due to the prop and using our advanced filtering we can actually go on ahead and isolate that so the way that I do that is if you click on the advanced filter tab here you'll see that it brings up this window that allows you to choose between three different digital signal processing filters. Now these are pro-level implementations. Um, believe it or not, all these filters, I did a lot of work uh, you know, with the software. The uh, Chebyshev filter allows an additional parameter for stat band ripple. Now I, I can have an hour's worth of a video here explaining the differences between the different filter types each one has pluses and minuses. I think for digital signal processing, these are the uh, the, the best um, three top best filters that you can use. And uh, as you can see here, uh, these are bandpass filters, which basically allow us to isolate a particular frequency. 
So again, knowing that the component we want to isolate is around 50 hertz, what we can simply do is we can go here and as you can see by default so we can leave it at that uh, because between a lower cutoff of 10 and an upper cutoff of 70 uh, that includes uh, the 50 hertz component and um, the fact that I bought this filtering window up places the entire software into digital into digital signal processing mode and you'll see the differences it basically will collect samples when we do a run and then once we have collected those samples it will then proceed to run them through the filter uh, but then you can see once we have those samples that we can actually just continue to uh, keep reusing them uh, so that uh, we can uh, uh, continue to uh, improve on our filtering so again orienting the propeller the way that I have it um, I'm gonna go on ahead with this parameters and take a run uh, same as before now the differences that you'll see is that there is no vector um, you'll see that there's a lot of noise in the accelerometer because we completely disable any other filtering and then you'll see when this is over it will get processed by the DSP and there you go so what happened and we can see some major differences here including if we zoom out now you can see the functionality of the uh, the graph that here's what the signal the raw signal coming out of the accelerometer was uh, and after DSP was applied here's what comes out so uh, it should be completely apparent that you know the way this bandpass filter um, is working is absolutely spot-on right in terms of isolating uh, that in balance uh, now what I can do is I created this refilter button here that once you click it it basically takes all the samples that we collect them and runs it through the DSP again so that if we make changes here we can see what those changes are without having to take another run in addition to that is if we bring up our FFT now take a look at this um, FFT now before you see that we had a lot of noise and we had some imbalances but we completely have isolated our 50 Hertz component so now we are laser focused right on that component that we want to eliminate okay so not only are we identifying that we have this vibration but now our rig is also capable of telling us where the imbalance is and this is where the calibration part comes in right so again if I take my prop and I had it in this direction when I when I ran it and I narrow my filter bandwidth down let's say I go to 40 again the imbalance was around 50 and we run the calibration look at the effect that that had in our imbalance vector it, it, it changed at almost 90 degrees by completely refocusing on that 50 Hertz imbalance and since we know that according to the way our setup is here we had the reference blade here the imbalance because of the tape was on this blade here right which is gonna point to this plate here we can manipulate our, f our filter further to point in that vector so what I do is maybe narrow it a little more okay that had a good effect let me see the effect I'm gonna have if I open it up in case there are any harmonics at the upper end okay so that's good let me narrow it down a little bit more okay so I'm happy with that with that result obviously I'm gonna need to now flip the blade see if I get the same result at the other hand uh, on the other side um, maybe come in here and modify the parameters a little more and then after I do that I will then take this tape out and also make sure that I place weights on the bell here and there to align it as well uh, and there is also where you might want to use one of the uh, invert buttons to get it aligned to your orientation but anyway let's see we ran it this way I'm now gonna flip the blade I'm gonna have the heavy blade toward me uh, making pretend that's a reference blade which basically should point the vector in this direction after all filtering is done so let me go on ahead and take that run it's gonna be the initial process very noisy it's just collecting data and uh, after the data has been collected you will then pass it through the uh, through the advanced DSP for the data we really want that 50 Hertz in balance okay look at that uh, pretty much spot on you know we, we flipped the vector it completely isolated the imbalance uh, and again we can we can rerun it completely isolated the imbalance to that 50 Hertz component look at how clean uh, our FFT is 
uh, and he pointed that, hey, you're imbalancing down this blade, which is really what we wanted. Now, you can go and fiddle with this to make it a little better. Uh, again, uh, let me see what the effect is of maybe not narrowing it as much. Okay, wrong way. I don't know. There you go. Uh, I'll open it up even a little more. You know, you you play with these parameters. You know, for me, this is as accurate as accurate will get, right? I, I mean, it's right on the blade. It, it showed you where the imbalance is. The... Um, uh, the waveform here is absolutely, you know, stunningly clean and clear. You know, we can, uh, I mean, this is almost a perfect sine wave. Um, so you can really begin to see the effects of a good design DSP filter uh, is. And then again, uh, you know, the only way that you can play with this is, is choosing different filter types. You know, it, it could be certain imbalances with your rig. Um, you know, some filters are more linear. Others are better at maintaining constant phase. Uh, others are uh, better at having a sharper cutoff, uh, like for example on on the butter on the uh, Butterworth filter here. That's the case, uh, and you know just do some 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 um, research on Google and you'll see uh, what are the differences between these filters. Uh, but I, what I wanted to highlight is how we were able to identify a uh, initial imbalance and then completely isolate the imbalance so we can work on it. All right. So now if we know that this is our heavy blade and we know, for example, that our rig is oriented correctly, that here it will point in the right direction, here it will point in the other direction, we can actually begin to balance the blade. Um, I'll tell you what, let me take another run. I flipped the blade, the vector should point in the other direction, to again confirm our uh, orientation and calibration. You know, as you also can begin to see, a, a, an accelerometer with no filtering is pretty much useless. Okay, look at that. It is absolutely razor sharp, spot on accurate. Uh, you know, by flipping the blade and our filtering, I mean, it automatically pointed um, with an extreme accuracy. I mean, with even one degree here at the 270 degree mark, which is exactly where we placed the tape. Um, I, I, I'm just amazed actually by incorporating DSP filtering uh, into the software, how much it has improved uh, its accuracy. You could have gotten as close using low pass filters here but you would have to use compensation and, and that's absolutely possible um, and the reason why I have left these parameters in here is because uh, it, it's always good to be able to see almost like the raw state and play with some of these low pass filters as well to get you a decent result also you know we're balancing for four point you know the uh, for a four-point balance, we do not need direction, right? All we need is a force magnitude. So it's always uh, good to leave the filters in here because, again, the, the more filtering we do, the more components we take away for a four-point balance. We want everything there because all we're looking is for a magnitude, not a direction, right? So those will remain, uh, but uh, for balancing the blade, uh, you can begin to see uh, what improvement the filters make. Now, what I want to do here as a as a last uh, 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 item for this video is I'm going to actually go on ahead and remove uh, the piece of tape that made my propeller uh, unbalanced. Okay, uh, I have done some previous work to balance this prop. You can see some other pieces of tape on it, and you know what I want you to see here is uh, you know this was what it was in an in balance state. You can see the magnitude uh, of the filtered waveform. You can actually also see the magnitude of the total force. It was over 330 some odd million, right? Again, this is just a number for us to use as a reference. Now, um, I, I know that this blade in this state is pretty well balanced, so I'm going to go ahead and take another run so I can show you the difference of what a balanced blade is actually going to look like. It's going to take the same samples. Now, the accelerometer graphs are, are going to be uh, almost as big because uh, what we're doing is uh, I've switched the accelerometer to full resolution mode, uh, but the filtering, okay, should tell a big difference. And, and, and take a look at that, right? Uh, you can see the previous values were in excess of 200. Uh, now with this, you know, we went from a 340 some odd million down to almost 34, all right? So, so this is what a decent balanced blade is going to look like. You can try to bring these numbers down. 
you know, don't pay as much attention to the width of this because I have normalized it to about 16 million. So when this number begins to get below 16 million, you'll see this line get thinner and thinner, which basically means uh, there's room for improvement, right? It, it shows us here that there's some sort of an unbalance in the hub, uh, so you can add a few pieces of tape more uh, to actually try and alleviate that, you know, and we can, you know, we can keep refiltering, um, but we can also confirm this from the FFT. You know, our FFT was in the magnitudes of something like a hundred and uh, 40 or 50 or so you know when we uh, when we initially did this and and now look at the magnitude uh, it's just a little bit over 20 so we have done uh, tremendous improvement in terms of balancing our prop and you can clearly see that with your filtered graph uh, as well as with your uh, you know as well as with your FFT now with that said again don't forget that what I did from a calibration standpoint is I placed a piece of tape on the blade either here or there but in order for you to do a complete calibration, you have you would have to remove the tape and then also place tape on the bell right here and there. Uh, look at the previous calibration videos because we really also need to take care of the vectors that might be pointing here and here before we can consider this uh, completely calibrated for us then to go back and uh, uh, you know start to balance our prop. And then you might want to take a couple of runs. I'm going to take another one here. You know the readings. Uh, might vary a little bit, you know, there's, depending on how the accelerometer vibrates, you will have some variation. Okay, uh, notice it was around 30, 33 or so, we went down to about 25. You know, you will vary within maybe 10 or so uh, million, um, but again, as you can, you know, I, as long as it's not uh, wider than that, you know, also take a look at your graph here and you can see that from a uh, graphical standpoint you have really done a lot of work in reducing those vibrations uh, which is a telltale sign that you are balancing your uh, your propeller a lot better okay so I, I just wanted to introduce this uh, if you close down uh, the bandpass filter window that will automatically now put the program back into its normal mode where you can use the low pass filtering you know for doing runs um, and then once you open up the filter window again as such it puts it into uh, you know it puts it into DSP mode uh, and then varying your uh, again your lower and upper cutoffs allows you to you know to tune it so a um, couple of other things to fix uh, before this release is done um, just making some additional improvements so uh, it, it would be uh, relatively soon here but I wanted to show you um, you know digital signal processing because I think it has made a tremendous addition uh, to the software uh, in, it, in improving its accuracy and certainly allowing you to uh, you know to achieve an extremely well balanced uh, you know setup uh, both from a motor perspective uh, but as well as a uh, propeller perspective. Um, thank you for watching uh, any questions you know please post them in our forum and RC groups uh, really would like to uh, see a lot of your builds um, you know have a lot more folks you know using the software with different builds uh, you know so way we can you know work out any kinks and uh, really the only way that we're gonna learn uh, and keep improving it is by uh, you know having uh, those uh, uh, those results so thank you for watching let me know if you have any other questions I'll see you in the forums